R.I.P. Rest in peace. It's a term used to say one hopes a person who has died will have peace in death. I will be sharing with you two stories of people who have vanished during their deaths. Jeffrey Merriweather Jr. and Julie Mott out of East Point, Georgia. On June 12, 2019, a father of three, 31-year-old Jeffrey Merriweather Jr. had gone missing. He had not been seen or heard from in almost two weeks after gunshots were fired at a McDonald's parking lot on Virginia Avenue. A bystander at that McDonald's took a gunshot wound to her face she was later taken and treated at a hospital. At the time, no one knew if there was one gunman or more. Meriwether's family believed that the shooting had something to do with his disappearance. Surveillance at that McDonald's would show Meriwether Jr. entering the restaurant parking lot in a black Cadillac SUV. He would exit the SUV and get inside a white Toyota 4Runner. Someone started to shoot at the white Toyota and the black SUV exchanged fire. Both vehicles would pull out of the parking lot. Meriwether Jr. still inside the 4Runner. The vehicle that Meriwether Jr. was in had been driven, it would find out later by an acquaintance. Authorities now were looking for both vehicles. Meriwether Jr.'s family reported him missing. Ten days later, his body was found behind an abandoned house on Pecan Drive on June 19th. He was skeletal, decomposed, and his corpse weighed nearly 34 pounds. The cause of death could not be determined at the Fulton County medical examiner's facility. So he would be sent to another facility who specialized in the handle of rapid decomposing in St. Louis. The box that Meriwether Jr. was placed in was a 2 inch by 16 inch by 14, shipped from the depot in Austell, Georgia. It was supposed to take two days. However, the box never arrived to St. Louis. The box has not been seen since. The National Funeral Directors Association only allows the U.S. Post Office Service to legally ship human remains. But protocols have to be followed. Now, in 1993, my grandfather had passed away on a vacation in Bermuda. His entire body was sent mailed back to New York City, and this was in 1993. My father recently passed away in October. I currently reside in Georgia. His body was sent or transported to Alabama. So yes, this happens every day, the transporting of the deceased. It's not anything new. Now losing the deceased is another story. I was not sure if FedEx has a legal protocol where they can now transport remains of the deceased. However, FedEx was responsible for Meriwether Jr.'s body. He lost his life involving a drug deal gone bad. But that still doesn't mean that his family doesn't deserve to know where and what happened to their child. A spokesman for the FedEx said the body arrived at Austell location. However, no one could find the remains after that. With tracking numbers and having to sign for packages, Meriwether Sr. said he wants to know how has his son's body been lost for three years. No one has said anything to him, not FedEx, nor the medical examiner's office. It's hard to get closure when you don't know where your son's remains are located. 
I think somebody should be held accountable for this. It's not something you sweep under the carpet, said Meriwether Sr. At this point in time, I just want what's left of my son to put him to rest. It's hard for Meriwether Jr.'s parents to get over this. It's a matter that they do need closure and they don't know where their son is. Kathleen Meriwether, the mother, she said, quote, is my son's murder ever going to be solved? Are we ever going to lay him to rest? End quote. He was obviously violated once when his life was taken from him while he was alive. Now it seems like he has been violated again in death. So what happened at that McDonald's that led to gunfire and a missing body for 10 days? There was supposed to be a sale of marijuana. Meriwether Jr. and another man, Christian Darrell Thomas, had arrived in a black Cadillac Escalade. Elisha Bahati and two other unknown men had arrived in that white Toyota 4Runner. Within minutes, Thomas allegedly walked to the 4Runner and he began shooting firing at Bahati. The vehicles had all driven off outside of the McDonald's parking lot. Everyone involved has been arrested and an investigation had started in 2019. Meriwether Jr.'s parents and his children are still living a nightmare, not knowing where Jeffrey Meriwether Jr is san antonio texas august 8 2015 julie mott 25 years old passed away losing her battle with cystic fibrosis on august 8th on august 15th the day she would have turned 26 years old her memorial service was held tearfully her family and friends would say their last goodbyes to her they spoke of fond memories her being a vibrant young woman, her love of nature, and her horseback riding skills. The services ended at 1.30 p.m. As friends and family left for 10 to 15 minutes, her boyfriend at the time, Bill Wilburn, stood by her casket longer than usual. Her body then was wheeled to another area to be transported to the crematorium for cremation. At 4.30 p.m., the staff would lock up the chapel and they would go home. The next morning, employees noticed the hinges on Julie's casket had been damaged. Opening it up, Julie had been gone, stolen from her casket. There were no signs of forced entry to the building. The security system had not been set off. Volunteers would search and look for the missing body. A $20,000 reward was offered by the owner of Mission Park for leads and arrests on the person or persons involved. Suspicions would fall on Julie's boyfriend then at the time, Bill Wilborn, who stayed around her casket for 15 minutes after the memorial service was over. He harassed Mission Park and the Mott's family, calling them hundreds of times it was not clarified on what exactly was being said. CCC footage would show Bluebird driving around the facility, peeping through the windows, shaking lock door handles, trying to enter inside the building, staring straight into the CCC cameras. His actions were peculiar. This was all leading up to Julie's body disappearing. He was arrested and spent two days in jail for going on the Mission Park's property only after he was ordered not to. It was considered trespassing.
Bill Wilborn was never charged with anything due to the disappearance of Julie Mott's body. The owner of Mission Park and his wife was sued by another family for mistakenly mixing up a body with another body months before Mott's had even passed away. I had even read articles that an employee, quote, dealt with Satan, unquote, and that employee worked at the chapel around that time. Did he have anything to do with it? Six years later, no new evidence and her body has never been found. The family sued, feeling that they were deceived and they were awarded $8 million dollars in damages. I have seen the stories from deceased bodies being physically and sexually violated, robbed of their body parts and stolen altogether, hearse being stolen containing the bodies of deceased people in them, graves being dug up just to take jewelry and valuables off the deceased and some of the deceased even being stolen out of their graves altogether. To sum it up, we're not safe when we're alive, and we damn sure aren't safe when we're dead.